Dreskowski moving to amend Senate File 1331, the unofficial engrossment as follows. The amendment is coded A50. The author of the amendment, Representative Dreskowski. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Members, this uh, amendment is pretty straightforward. The S Secretary of State is required to print materials uh, for the uh, polling place on Election Day. Uh, the amendment uh, would require that the instructions be printed in English. Right now, the statute is absent of language identifying the default language in which these materials should be printed. Uh, I, would, uh, I would note that there is permissive language uh, later in the statute at the, in uh, subdivision 11 of 204B.27 that allows uh, the call to be made by the Secretary uh, of State to uh, print these materials also in languages other than ling English. So this would establish the default language, which is clearly absent in the statute. It would bring clarity to the statute. Uh, it's a common sense amendment that would help us uh, in our attempt to bring uh, unity to the citizens who are voting on election day and uh, bring consistency and integrity to the process. Uh, I'd appreciate your support for the amendment and I ask for a roll call. A roll call has been requested. Are there 15 hands? Seeing 15 hands, there will be a roll call. Representative Winkler. Madam Speaker, members, um, a couple of things. First, uh, Representative Simon is distributing a handout, and uh, it's a very old ballot in Minnesota that is uh, printed in a number of different languages. We've got a rich tradition of immigrant culture and life in Minnesota, and uh, while, of course, it's to everybody's advantage in the United States to learn English, we do not need to create this kind of barrier. Uh, and in fact, uh, it may be worth noting that uh, I believe when uh, Representative Kiffmeyer was Secretary of State. These materials were printed in six different languages. Now, the idea is if you want to explain the uh, occasionally uh, technical nature of voting, it might be more helpful to do it in somebody's native language rather than uh, passing a certain uh, English proficiency test before they can even understand the process. Please vote no. Representative Simon. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker and members. Well, I, I, the, the handout should be coming around. Members, I think all of us, including me from time to time, sometimes live under this myth that all of the folks in our families uh, who might have immigrated to this country came here off the boat and immediately and forever started speaking English and only English. That is just absolutely false. It's false in the case of my family, and I would guess it's false in the case of almost every one of your families. And if you look here, and this is what's going to be handed out, this is a sample Minnesota ballot from 1896. 1896. And remember, you can't vote unless you're a citizen, right? So you're not eligible to vote. These are people who are citizens of the United States who have taken an English test to be citizens, so we know they speak English. But even back in 1896, and you'll see this once it's passed out, I think there's just a little copying delay, you'll see voting instructions. I'm counting here in five languages. I'm guessing here this is French, Czech, Polish, Italian, and a Scandinavian language that I can't quite decipher. It's probably Swedish or Norwegian, I don't know, but it's in Gothic print. Then if you go over to uh, next in the, in the handout, and this is from the 1920s and 30s, here there's a full page of voting instructions in what looks to be German, what looks to be Finnish, Polish, Bohemian, uh, French, Swedish, and Norwegian as recently as the 1920s or 30s. Again, remember, nobody who can go in and cast a ballot in those years or now can go in without being a citizen, and you can't be a citizen unless you took an English test and are proficient in English. So I think it's time that all of us, and I'm prone to this too, I'm just as much uh, guilty of this as anyone, that we get away from this myth that all of our folks who came to this country stepped off the boat, learned English immediately, even after becoming citizens, and forfeited and never used their native tongues. That is simply not the case. That is, it's historical fact that we've always enabled people who come from foreign countries who are citizens, legal, and um, legitimate citizens of this country to vote. And we've made sure that when they do so, it's not a bad thing to use their native tongues in order to determine how to do so. So I hope that that uh, handout will come uh, to members' desks 
and I hope it's irrefutable evidence that throughout our history in Minnesota, we've always accommodated those who have come over here from other countries. Please vote no on the amendment. Representative Dreskowski. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I would, I would point out uh, once again, uh, in, in uh, Representative Simon, I think we, uh, we all uh, have to realize that we do respect uh, those that come here and speak in different languages. But at the same time, we have to have some order and consistency and develop a standard to how we approach our elections and our voting procedures. And I will point out again, uh, later on in this section of law, there is a provision in Subdivision 11 that allows, in those cases where it's deemed necessary, to provide these materials in other languages as well. What this would do is simply develop a standard, a consistent standard, that we as Minnesotans realize that English is a standard by which we, uh, we run our elections and uh, encourage people uh, to uh, participate uh, within if they are able. Again, there are uh, exceptions offered uh, to accommodate these people who are unable to meet this standard. I appreciate your support on the amendment. Representative Emmer. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Would Representative Simon yield to a question? He will yield. Representative Emmer. Representative Simon, I'm not exactly uh, clear. Are you proposing that uh, rather than do the Driskowski amendment to confirm what it is we're doing, that uh, the state of Minnesota should go back uh, almost uh, 90 years in history and start to uh, publish things like this in several different languages? Is that what you're proposing? Representative Simon. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, or Madam Speaker and Representative Ember. That's not what I'm necessarily proposing. What I am proposing is that we all abandon a long-held belief that all of us, including me, have had from time to time, which is just demonstrably false, that those of us, which is, I think, almost all of us, who have uh, ancestors and forebears who came here from other countries, immediately embraced English and ditched their native tongues. That's, that's the only point I'm trying to get across, and particularly in the elections context, um, We've always had a long and proud tradition of accommodating those who are English speakers, who are in fact fluent in English, or at least proficient enough to become a citizen, but who, when it comes to technical descriptions of things like voting, and I suspect other things in civic life, um, can be accommodated with instructions in their native tongue. That, that's the only point I was getting at. Representative Emmer. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and thank you, Representative Simon. Well, if that's the point, then I don't know why we handed this out because that completely uh, confuses the amendment before us. The Diskowski amendment is simply confirming that these should be in English. And again, uh, we're not uh, suggesting that anybody should uh, forego their native tongue. Uh, we're simply saying that when we run our elections in this country, and particularly in the state of Minnesota, that uh, you will be able to uh, uh, understand a ballot uh, and it will be in English, which I don't think anybody here disagrees with. If somebody thinks that we should start publishing our ballots with something other than the English language, I I'd welcome to hear it today. Because if that's what the disagreement is, then let's have the disagreement. If that's what you uh, believe, that we should be publishing our election ballots in languages other than English, please stand up and say so on the House floor and vote against this amendment. If you believe that we should have these in English, if you believe that the English language is the primary language that should be spoken and understood in this state, then vote for the Driskowski Amendment. Representative Tao. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker and members. I, uh, you know, the whole point of giving instruction is so people know what you want them to do. And so you give instruction that they won't be able to read or they won't be able to understand and what's the point of the instruction. So, uh, you know, I, my English is a little bit broken. I mean, it's not as uh, well uh, as someone on the floor might be, but here's what I'll do. Representative Draskowski, I will challenge you to a spelling contest right here on the floor in English. After that, we could do it Hmong too, but we'll do it English first. 
and and Madam Speaker, you could read the word, say the word, and we'll challenge it. And if I lose, I'll vote for this amendment. <laughs> Representative Chow, are you asking him to yield? <laughs> Representative Draskowski. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker. Uh, Representative Tao, I'll, I'll, I'll take you on that one, and the tiebreaker will be in Polish. Seeing no further discussion, the clerk will take the roll on the amendment.